Hi everyone, it's Killshot from 99 Game. <laughs> I've lost it already. This is The Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 10, Reactions and Live Chat. So just want to say, uh, what's up? Wow, I, I butchered the intro right from the start. That doesn't happen too often. I'm reading some of the comments, trying to prep for everything. So hopefully you guys really thoroughly enjoyed the episode. I know I did. Even though we had the spoilers out there, there was still a lot of uh, details that sort of uh, found them their way and into uh, my notebook. So I want to say what's up to everyone here. <laughs> a couple people are already commenting. Don't hashtag it. Bad intro. I get it. We do have a lot to cover and I just talked to you guys a few hours ago. So it looks like most of our chat actually came true. I've got four pages worth of notes here so there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to get to. Looks like the crowd is definitely rolling in. So I want to say what's up. Hey Curry Gaming. Very nice. Um, this is my first block, like, didn't even take how long, like uh, 10 seconds? Cool. What's up, Stax? What's going on? Anime. All right, I, I see the group all rolling in. So once we get a few more people here, I'm going to set the, you guys know, the ground rules. Previously on the Walking Dead spoiler chat. So let me give it a couple more seconds for a few people to uh, jump in here so they know what the deal is. Alyssa, how you doing? You missed the stream earlier, but I see you made the uh, late night stream. Um, DJ Flex Master, I have not went through all the comments, sorry. It has been a pretty hectic afternoon. We did the uh, Sunday spoiler, went right to Walking Dead, went right to Talking Dead after that, and then here we are once again. So, yes, we do. Bree Thompson. We have Winslow the Walker. So, what's up, everybody? We'll get some shout-outs here in a couple minutes and definitely throughout the video. Uh, those of you that are new to our live reaction and chat, this chat is all about each and every one of you. So, any comment is subject to being read. I'm going to read your name in most cases and give you guys credit for it. So, type a lot of comments, a lot of questions. We'll debate them. We'll talk about them. We will talk spoilers of course, and then you guys can do a couple things. Uh, we're over 100 people, so drag the mouse up over to the right, slap the like button really hard if you could, and when the video goes live, we'll do this about 45 minutes probably, about 10 minutes after the video goes live. If I don't get to your question, or if I get to your question and you guys like it, leave a comment as well, because there's going to be a lot of people watching this on playback. Last week, I think over 18,000 watched it on playback, so a lot of uh, good interaction. So, cool, let's get to it. Um, we'll start out with, what do you guys think? Uh, Diane's sister, did she put an arrow in her sister's head? She kept talking about the dress. My sister liked that dress. So, kind of an uh, interesting story. I guess it spiced it up a little bit. And then led into the heavy metal guy. So, I, I got to stay with Heavy Metal Guy. I know they actually said his name was Jared. But, yeah, I think Heavy Metal Guy is much more appropriate. It's it's endearing. So, CJ says, when do you think Carol will find out about Glenn and Abe? Carol will find out about Glenn and Abe when Morgan tells her. It's going to be a few weeks. I think three weeks from now. So, Karsten is confused why Richard wanted to kill Carol. Well, Karsten, you didn't watch the spoilers that we did about two weeks ago because uh, we had a video up called Traitor Revealed on our channel right here. And we went through exactly what Richard, his plan was. Go back and check that video out. What's going on, Rubier? So cool. Everything coming through okay? Can you guys uh, hear loud and clear? What's going on, Esteban? <laughs> yeah, I think somebody hit some lag because somebody said that I was running late for my own show, so I don't think they were able to get in. 
Absolutely. What's up, Paradox? Moody Girl said, Richard's beatdown was not satisfying. So what do you guys think? Did you, How would you guys feel about that beatdown? Let's throw it out to the group right now. Do you think the beatdown was uh, solid enough? Or do you think Daryl should have uh, continued? Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it was just one or two people. Awesome. Ruthless Aggression, thank you. Ruthless says uh, this is his new favorite YouTube channel. So, glad to be your favorite. I'm going to go through some bullet points. So, we'll go through some of my notes that I have questions for each of you, and then I'm going to read a lot of your comments. I got to tell you, I was a little, I was a little mixed. The Daryl beatdown happened. I, I still feel a little sorry for Richard, though. Yeah, I, I know that's not going to be a real popular opinion. It, it's the concept of what Richard is trying to do. He's, he's so desperate that he wants to kill Negan that he's willing to sacrifice anybody and anything. And I guess that's the thing is I'm. I don't think it was right, but at the same time, I understand why he's doing it. It's not just for selfish reasons. It's he's he's looking at the bigger picture and he can't do it alone. So, Sharon, we did find out what happened to Father Gabriel. I know you haven't watched the episode yet. But yeah, I actually liked uh, Father G tonight. Hit it. Anime, give us the theory. Yeah, you know, desperate times, desperate measures. So because we all are so attached to Carol and the Carol and Daryl relationship, it it's easy to sort of hate Richard. I don't hate him, though, right now. I just, um, I, I'm going to hate him a little later on because he doesn't give up on it. And because I know that, I guess it's uh, it's easier it's easier to start leaning in that direction. Yeah, Seth killed it, didn't he? Father G was incredible. It's about time. So here's the question: We've uh, we've went down that roller coaster where we hated Father G and now we like him, and now Morgan's sort of in that rut, right? Because I read some of the the comments. Are we going to be easy to forgive Morgan? Morgan seems to have dug a little bigger hole than Father Gabriel. Yeah, good uh, good comment, Lindsay. Lindsay says uh, she loved how Daryl warned Richard that if Carol gets hurt, even if she catches a cold, he's coming back, right? And you got to believe that. So Alyssa says that Carol and Daryl union wasn't as satisfying to me as I was expecting it to be. It's because there's a lot of baggage. There's a lot of... Um, I think Daryl went there not knowing what to expect. And because he's lying to her and he's keeping that kind of as a secret, I don't think it was going to be like a real happy reunion. Um, but when I was watching, I'm thinking e either Daryl was starving or he changed the subject. And I think he knows Carol likes to cook. So it's almost like he, he said something along the lines of, what do you have to, uh, you have to be a king to get food around here? It was very abrupt. But I think it was like, this is so awkward right now that I'm lying to her. Let me change the subject. And then all of a sudden it was, it was happy times. What's up, Lisa G? How you doing tonight? Heath Daniel. Oh, my God. I haven't watched the episode yet. I can't wait. Yeah, there was Salty Rosita once again. Hold on, people. There is a purpose. Don't. I'm telling you, don't give up on her just yet. 
she dropped a huge, huge bomb shell of what uh, what her future is. I thought it was a very good episode. I have gotten some requests to do ratings of the episode, so maybe Monday or Tuesday I might just do a recap and we'll come up with like a 10-point system. I was I was pretty pleased with it, though. It was funny because on the, uh, if you guys missed the spoiler Sunday, one of the things we were talking about is... Uh, was Daryl's reaction to Morgan. And I said it was going to be similar to uh, Gregory, where Daryl's like, you're either with us or you ain't. But with Morgan, it was kind of like, hell's wrong with you. <laughs> so it wasn't the exact wording, but it was it was close enough. So when I'm watching, I'm thinking like, yeah, it's typical Daryl response. So Gage Grossman kills. How will Richard... Um, Get the saviors to kill Benjamin. Rumor has it it's going to be called Melongate, where Richard is going to. They're going to short him. I think they're going to. You saw those uh, different buckets of produce they had in the back. So I guess they're going to deliver produce. It's going to be Richard and Benjamin, and they're going to give them four melons. So it's going to be. He's going to find a way to pin that on Benjamin, and Benjamin's going to take the beat down. I'll, I'll get some more of the details, but I think that's the gist of it. So was um, was Richard playing Daryl in the beginning with the whole uh, bow thing? What did you guys think about that? Was it, uh, you know, Richard lost his gun. Was he trying to get sympathy and, and say, here, you know, you're a bowman and we got this in common? I thought that was kind of subtle. Barrick's game is like, forget you guys. Morgan is great. Yeah, you know, Morgan could be great, but I'm I'm growing tired of the, the moral values and, you know, it's, you got to fight for something at this point. I thought Daryl did a good job of calling him out at the end. Yeah, not liking uh, not liking Morgan's character at this point. Now, if you, um, Lindsay. Let's see. What's Lindsay's comment up here? Kills, do you think... What do you think will happen to... Oh, sorry. It went really fast. I'll have to catch you on the next time. Jenna! How you doing, Jenna? I haven't seen you in a little while. Uh, what do you think will happen when Carol finds out about Glenn and Abe? I'm dying. I think she'll feel betrayed by Daryl and Morgan, but I think she'll fight anyway. So, I think, no, Carol's at a point now where I think she knows... She doesn't know Daryl lied, but when Morgan tells her, I think she'll understand why Daryl did it. So I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. She needs a couple more episodes to get ready. She's going to fight. You know, we got pictures of her in her uh, night gear. So the rumor is that Benjamin dies. Morgan loses it because it's Richard's fault. That Morgan kills Richard. He gets his will back to fight. I'm not 100% on that. I have been hearing it from a couple sources, though. That Morgan will kill Richard, and then Morgan will actually tell Carol what happened. And then Carol goes back into uh, beast mode. So, Lindsay says, Kills, do you think Sasha will die this season? Not 100% it'll be this season. Could be a carryover. I think the the fate is going to be determined this season. But whether they show the death, I I mean to me that's not a super well I guess it could be a cliffhanger because you don't know if she's 100% going to take Holly's role or not. Just 
chopstick abuse. Yeah, Benjamin was a little quick on the draw. That could get him in some trouble later on. He did promise Ezekiel he was going to think. Yeah, we, we discussed that a little while ago, too. We talked about several of the catalysts. So if you could pinpoint, like, one thing, I think uh, Benjamin's death is probably going to be really what triggers toward all-out war. Heath is not dead yet. Let's hold out for that just a little bit more. I did think it was uh, Richard told uh, Daryl that I'd die for the kingdom. And Daryl says, why don't you? <laughs> pretty, pretty simple to the point. Daryl doesn't have too many words, but they are directly, they are at the point. So one of the questions that we asked, I think, in the stream on Wednesday was, how would Rick fight the walker? You know, all his weapons have been taken away. Is he going to get anything? So he uses a keyboard, doesn't work. Who would have thought a spiked walker could be killed by sofa pillows? I mean, that's, that's what it took, right? A whole bunch of uh, couch pillows pinned that walker down. There were some bags of trash, some other stuff, but... What's going on, Chris Belenza? That's okay. Hey, better late than never. And I guess we don't have to call it Spike Walker anymore. It is Winslow the Walker. Such a uh, endearing name for a walker. Oh, man. So Root Beer Brad wants to know, how do I think Shiva will die? <sighs> I'm going to hold off on that one a little bit. I don't want to think about it. Hey, Brian. Very nice for you to use uh, that term. Just ban him. I mean, you know, if, if somebody, their first comment is that, Drake, don't even delete the comment. Just get him out of here. That's just beyond stupid. There must be better ways to uh, get attention than to come in and, and just type something like that from the start. You need a hug. You need a big hug, man. Uh, Full House Freak, who came up with Garbage Pail Kids? Um, I'm going to guess the Spoiling Dead people. That's the first place that I saw it. Probably Ninja Pancake. Um, Eagle Eye Cherry Pie, you think Winslow was a living person that they killed for a specific person? Uh, I don't think they killed him per se. I, I mean, obviously they knew who he was. I, so I do think he was part of the group and then died for whatever reason. So Sharon, Kills, uh, what's your first instinct of Jadis? I like Jadis. I know on Talking Dead, 72% of people said they don't trust her. I trust her. Roger Cannington, new subscriber. Will Eugene make blanks? Yes. Next season. It's too early. Too early for him to uh, to trick Negan just yet. Six Side Sports, 999. What do you think of the group and the Scavengers deal going forward? I like the negotiation. There were several uh, little tidbits of information um, they wanted half, and I think Rick's just having those flashbacks like you ain't getting half. It's a third. So Rick's trying to drive the bargain, but he just did it in a friendly way. And that smiling is contagious. So it started out with Rick smiling, but then when he walked around the corner when he was successful, the whole group actually had that, that, that sigh moment. Um, Negan's not going to kill Dwight. 
Dwight is going to defect and be a part of Rick's group. Can Morgan kill Jared? I, you know, I don't know who's going to kill Jared. Somebody needs. I'm not even calling him Jared. The heavy metal dude. Um, I think Richard's going to kill him. I do think there will be some level of vindication. I don't know how Richard's going to kill him. But, yeah, let's mark that one down. That's going to happen before Richard actually dies. Sean Brown. Kills, do you think Dwight will betray the Saviors? Yes, I do. Dwight's going to lose it next week, man. Dwight's going to go back. He's going to go back down memory lane. Jason Burns. Kill shot. I got a Lucille for Christmas. Congratulations on that. Ryan Kim. Where are they going to get the guns? Well, funny you should ask that. Oceanside. Come on, you guys had to catch that. It was that was so obvious at the end. Bad writing. So I love the episode, but that was like the ultimate softball for us in the future. Where I mean, Rick just out of the blue. Um, Tara, maybe you can tell us where not to go. Come on. Maybe I'll also tell you where to go and what I found. Rosita is not going to like the fact that Tara lied to her. Here, let me let me put it down in Rosita's terms because I can really relate to Rosita. So, what do you think she's going to... Remember what she said to Spencer? You made me go through all of that for one bullet, for one gun, and you had guns all along, you know, something along those lines. So how do you think she's going to react to Tara when the same thing applies? When Remember the scene where Tara came back and she goes, you had to find something. You had to find something. Nope, nothing. So now all of a sudden she's going to take them to Oceanside. But there is a catch. Let's see if you guys know what the catch is. Why do you think that Rosita is not going to go ballistic on Tara? when they go to Oceanside. Let's see. Let's see how many people have been following the spoilers really, really carefully. This is a big question. Um, Sean, I, I'm not going to say they're going to join. Nope. Not, not at all, Gage. There were two... No, Rosita won't be dead by then. That's not going to happen. There were two big hints from tonight's episode. Nope, 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 no. They told you guys. Okay, here's the deal. So Rosita said to Tara, I got to go. I gotta, I gotta, I'm got. I just going to go out on my own. So Rosita and Sasha are going to go one direction, and Tara is going to take the group to Oceanside. So there's going to be two different storylines working. Because if Rosita was there when Tara found the guns, she's going to just lose it because all the stuff that she went through to make one bullet. So, yeah, they were not saying it's bad writing, but if you were really, like, glued to the TV, those two comments were, like, out of the blue. They were out of left field. Exactly. There you go, Lou. Lou memorabilia. Rosita's going to Hilltop to make a plan with Sasha, and she's going to need her help because the other group's kind of lagging in her mind. And then Tara's going to break down, take Rick and everybody to Oceanside to uh, jack some of their weapons. I do think Cindy will join. Beatrice, nah, we'll see. <laughs> Root beer, Brad's like, who is Tara? 
Come on, bro. You had to recognize that that flannel jumped out of the TV screen. That's a good question. Michael Brown kills. What will happen with Maggie's pregnancy when Negan takes the Hilltop Doctor? We'll find out next season. All right, let me get through a few of my, I, uh, I got a few more bullet points here that I want to talk about, and then I'll take a few more of your questions. So while we're going through the list, uh, a couple hundred people off and on, if you guys could slap the like button, that would be awesome. And once again, when the video goes live, if I don't get to your question, if you guys could definitely go over, check out a little bit of the replay, and then leave some of your comments below for some of the people that will be watching during replay and I get a chance to see it live. So Carol had a tripwire. Jerry with a cobbler. So just a couple interesting things there. I like how he brought the cobbler. And there you go. Question. Question for the group. What was more touching? The uh, the hug scene between Carol and Daryl or the uh, Daryl reaching his hand in and petting Shiva? What What was more emotionally moving to the group tonight? Yeah, for me, I thought uh, I thought Daryl petting the tiger got me a little choked up. It's all about trust. Yeah, I think that trust is going to go a long way with Ezekiel. Morgan Morgan did hit that correctly. Yeah, we're split on it. Yeah, a lot of people like the tiger scene. Look at that. <laughs> I think the I think the Carol and Daryl. We've been there before. If Rick and Daryl wouldn't have already had the hug scene, then maybe the Carol and Daryl hug would have been a little bit better. So, Miranda, I, I'll i have to go back and watch. I did not see an airplane pass Rick's head. Daniel Ivan says, I think Shiva will kill Negan. Negan ain't going to die. They got too much money invested in Jeffrey Dean Morgan right now. It's not a real tiger, but it just felt like a real tiger. I did like uh, Chris Hardwick's comment, though. I don't know if you guys watched The Talking Dead, where he said when Daryl reached in and, and petted Shiva, that would have been funny if uh, <laughs> she, she would just munched on him. It'd been like the end of Daryl. It'd have been it'd have been the greatest shock in Walking Dead history. Like, where's Daryl? I don't know. She even burps like a vest. Yeah. How would Morgan explain that to Ezekiel? Oh, you're gonna see Negan. Negan will be back in full effect next week. It's all gonna be about the saviors. Yep, they did say gun soon. So, Michonne got her replacement statue. She got her uh, cat, her wicker cat. And Daryl is heading up to Hilltop, so the storyline is, is definitely taking full effect. So why do you guys think Daryl is so anxious to get back to Hilltop? 
when he has safety there. I mean, we know some of the spoiler. We know what potentially could happen, but... Is it because Richard just completely violated his trust? Because Morgan just turned him down? I mean, Rick did tell him, you know, to help out with Ezekiel, and now he's bolting. I did see a Walmart truck when they first went up. It was like low prices every day. He is. I mean, he's on a mission to kill. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I see that. I mean, I can see he wants to help. But Daryl is definitely not, not planning this. And, I mean, he's seen. He's seen the wrath of that group. So what is he going to do up a hilltop? Maybe kill Gregory? Could be. Somebody's got to kill Gregory. Yeah, Sharon, I don't know I've heard that suggested because I, I think in the I think in the comics Maggie poisons Gregory. So possibly Daryl. Finish him off. Create a little anarchy. Could be. Start to get do a little bit of training. Yeah, good point, Lindsay. Yeah, Richard. Richard betraying him. You know, he thought he had that partnership and they could work something out, but yeah, that lasted about two minutes. Yeah, maybe Jesus would be a better partner. It's a good point, Bree. Well, see, there you go. Oh, he tries to poison her. There you go. Good correction. So this is why I am, uh, that's why I'm brushing up reading the comics. I'm not that far yet. I'm only on issue 29. I'll get there. So Gregory tries to poison Maggie, and Maggie hangs. All right, spoiler alert. Well, at least I'll know that when I get to whatever issue that is. Cool. Thank you. You guys keeping me straight. That was as bad as the uh, Star Wars Return to the Jedi reference. Return of the Jedi, sorry, on uh, Talking Dead. Shiva will die. Cost dollars for the production team. Lost Creeper. Who do you think will kill Negan? I, I don't know. Dude, we don't think Negan is going to die. At least I don't. So a couple more tidbits, and wow, this uh, these streams go really, really fast. We got about ten more minutes, so we'll take a few more questions. But so we learned the name was the Scavengers. That's the official name, not the Garbage Pail Kids. And I'm gonna throw it out to you guys. Question for the group, and I'll read some of your comments, some of your responses. So I think on Talking Dead. A good portion, I don't know what percentage, might have been in the 70s, said that Daryl should have told Carol the truth. So, what do you guys think? Should Daryl had just been straight up right there? I mean, he basically lied to her, went back, met Shiva, tried to tell Morgan what the deal was, and then bolts for Hilltop. Now we got Carol in limbo, living her happy life. Was it the right thing to do for Carol at that moment? So we got a few people. No, he shouldn't have told her.
Nope, no way. All right, it's starting to get split now. We started out like, no, he shouldn't have told her, but then a few more people are like, yes. Nuke soup. He shouldn't because Carol would have went on a rage. Yeah. I think he should have. I think he should have left it vague. I, I think there was a third option that he could have went because. I'm not saying this is a technique that people should uh, employ. But maybe he did change the subject a little bit, but he painted this picture that everything is perfect. And she was prying. She wanted to know, like, is everyone okay? Is everyone okay? Where I think he could, could have just came out and said, it's, there's just a lot going on, and it's very complicated. Because obviously, in her mind, she's already, she was thinking that. And I think seeing Daryl just reminded her that, oh, okay, maybe people aren't safe. I mean, she's reading a book. She's got flowers. She's eating pomegranates. She's getting cobbler brought to her. And all of a sudden, she sees Daryl, and it's like, oh, okay, there's a life that I left behind. Oh, by the way, are all the people I left behind okay? I would have... I don't know I would have told her all the details. So, Larma Car Carter wants to know, you know, what would I have done? But I would have um, I would have left it open for the whole explanation. I wouldn't have just kind of lied to her and painted a, a fairy tale world that everybody's fine. That's kind of kind of my thought. Sharon Doble says that she has a right to know. Well, and, and this kind of goes back to a, a philosophical question with Carol's well-being. So, you know, I'll, I'll throw this out to the group. It, it may be a little morbid, but I'll use this as an example. And it's not apples to apples or pomegranates to pomegranates. Because some of these situations for these, these characters, you don't know how long you have to live. Obviously, they have a shorter lifespan than most. So let's take the Carol situation and, and put it in more of a game of, like, scruples. So if... If you had two months to live, would you want to know? So let's uh, let's throw that out to the group. And and maybe this is not what people want to hear. Like, whoa, this just went from Walking Dead to like this hypothetical. So let's say you got two months to live. You want the doctor to come up and tell you the truth, or do you want him to lie to you and just uh, you know after 60 days you're gone. Man, I just asked that question. Like, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question myself. It's easier to ask the questions than to uh, to answer them for yourself. So Heath says yes. Larma says yes. Brandon says yes. Philip says no. Moody Girl wants to know. Sharon wants to know. Daniel wants to know. Okay. So you guys see where I'm going with this, right? I mean, Carol's an adult. Lie. Lindsay's like, lie to me. Muse wants the truth. So, you know, if you take that philosophy to a certain degree, then maybe he should have told Carol. Whew. See, Matthew, I, I wasn't expecting you to turn around and say, let me ask you the same question. It's hard. I I don't know. I don't know if I can answer that. Maybe, I guess from a preparation standpoint, yes. From a, are you going to be dwelling on it for two weeks and lose that time? Because right now, it is lost time. What you're hoping is that Carol either is disassociated with the group or you give her a little bit more healing time to become what you need her to be again. So 
if Daryl did it to keep her in La La Land where she never has to be involved with anything and she can just live out the rest of her life, okay, then I get it. If um, if he's going to need to kind of withdraw you know, that deposit and, and get her back on the team in order to win, I don't get it. So there you go. That's the way I would rationalize it. So, top kick, real quick. Did you see reports that DeMarcus Cousins is going to the Pelicans? No. Um, I did see that the Pelicans, I know this isn't Walking Dead. The Pelicans are inquiring about Boogie and also uh, Paul George, but I don't think they're going to get either one of them. I think they got to do that to make uh, Anthony Davis happy. Don't hold your breath for that trade to go through. All right, let's get back to Walking Dead. We've got a few more minutes here. I, sorry, I, you know, I didn't mean to throw a real downer, scrupulous question on everybody, but that's the first analogy that I came up with you know, when you're talking about like lying to someone to that degree. So let's get a few more. A lot of the same people are asking questions. Let's mix it up a little bit. Or I'm, uh, I'm skipping over a lot of people because they only ask it once, and I might have missed a couple. Who's ready for next Sunday? Hulk. Hey, don't get too far ahead here. Because we're going to be talking Walking Dead on Wednesday. And we should have uh, some hidden clues. There was some good stuff. I think uh, some good Easter eggs in there. Oh, boy. Okay, so Matthew's going to mix it up here. So Matthew wants to know. He's going he's gonna to go with another hypothetical. Well, let me ask you this. If you were to say a truck, uh, say a truck driver over the road and away from home and... Wait, what? Hold on. Yeah, I think, Matthew, sorry, the question scrolled up. So I think the question is if um, if it's not happening to you and it was one of your loved ones, would you want to know? I think in that situation, yes, you do. You want to know as quick as possible. So Chris Belenza, how much longer can Tara keep the secret? Two weeks. She's going to reveal it. Luckily, Rosita won't be there to shoot her when she finds out. Yeah, Daryl's eating soup. Unless she melts that cobbler down. I don't think so. That cobbler's being saved for later. What, um, we all talk spoilers, so let me throw this question out to the group as well, and then I'll take a couple more questions and we'll do some shout-outs. What surprised you most about tonight's episode? Because most people on, on this channel kind of, we talk spoilers, so they were expecting. But there were a couple things that sort of surprised me. So what was the biggest shock? Edward wants to know, do I think Rosita will die? I do think she'll die at some point. Just I think she's got a good another season left in her. Carol seeing Daryl. Shadow Blade, that was the biggest... Uh, yeah, but we, we talked about that in spoilers. Um, Brandon, I think that's a good point. Brandon Cervantes, Gabrielle being brave. I was a little surprised they showed uh, Gabrielle as fast as they did. Muse wants to know, do you think Daryl will take them to Oceanside? Absolutely. Uh, Daryl petting Shiva. That, we mentioned that in a spoiler. So I'm trying to think of things that are a little bit of... Uh, Lindsay, I think Lindsay Luke says Daryl leaving the kingdom. That shocked me a little bit. That Daryl lied. Um, Diane, I kind of, I was sort of on to that a little bit. 
Uh, definitely Lou. Lou memorabilia says, shocking moment was Benjamin took the heavy metal guy down. That definitely I liked and was a little surprising. Morgan losing his stick was a little surprising as well. He said, can I have my stick back, please? It's way too nice. How about, dude, you just need to give me that stick. That's really important to me. If you don't, I'm going to take it from you. Daryl not telling Carol what happened to Glenn and Abraham. Yeah, I mean, that was 50-50. I think we talked spoilers. We weren't sure whether he would or not, but it just made sense for him not to to develop the storyline, I suppose, because that at least opens the door for Morgan to sort of, you know, bleeding heart, tell Carol everything and get Ezekiel on board. Yeah, we're going to like Ben, but I think we're just going to have him, you know, we're going to like him for a short period of time. Seems like a likable dude. Shocking that Aaron uh, got another scar. Yeah, that was probably uh, hint number three. You know, hint number one was Rosita saying, hey, I would just go out and do this on my own. So there's number one. Hint number two, bad writing, was Rick saying, hey, Tara, you went out further than the rest of us. Maybe you can tell us where not to go. So that was like Captain Obvious. And then... Yeah, that, I'm reading comments here. Hold on a second. Will Morgan get a stick back? No, he's not going to. Yes, actually, yeah, I'm going to say yes, he'll, he'll get a stick back. No, we'll never see Morales again. I'm just going to put closure to it right now. All right, and... There we go, and we will end it with bombshell number three, since we've uh, made it dramatic, is Aaron said that uh, how Eric is going to react to his face. So I know there's speculation out there that Eric will do something drastic to protect Aaron. But I think Eric's got to go. Sasha's going to take a big bite out of Eric. All right, everybody, we are over our 45-minute allotted time frame. Time flies when we do these live streams. So just a couple things. I want to thank all of you guys for showing up. Um, Sunday's pretty action-packed for all of us. You know, we start with Chill with Kills in the morning. There's a lot of gaming fans. We do uh, Sunday spoilers. A lot of fun with that. And then, of course, our reactions and live chat. And we've created just a nice forum of people, just a, a super group to get in here, share some of the ideas, and you know, throughout the week we'll definitely do some live streams, streams, have some chat, and we may even do an emergency one here or there as well too. If some good information comes out, I know we do the uh, Walker Wednesday, where all of us sort of get together and talk about it. But um, I'm not immune to maybe a Tuesday or Thursday as well if, if something comes up. And we just need to kind of pull the group in and emergency Walking Dead meeting. It's important. We got to talk about it right now. So. Uh, Thanks so much to everybody. Appreciate everything that you guys do. There's going to be some videos throughout the week. And as customary, uh, once again, if you guys could slap the like button, that would be great. This video will be live for everybody to consume, not just the people in the live chat, in about 10, 15 minutes, if you guys could get over there as well. And I'm going to end this with a whole lot of shout-outs for all the people that are in this chat. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate all your comments, your interaction, your participation and uh, everything that you guys do is helping this channel grow, and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So I want to say what's up to Lost Creeper. Weird Walking Dead theories. Lee versus Rick. Rick, of course. Lee's dead. Lee can't fight Rick. Tire Burner. Muse. What's going on, Muse? The ETZ Mom. Sharon Doble. Thank you for being here. Joshua Fett. Chris Belenza. Bree Thompson. What's up? Sean Brown. Drake Vlogs Vlogs. One of my mods. Thank you so much for being here. Lindsay Luke. Thank you. Always a pleasure. You add a lot of value to the chat. Um, you know, appreciate your comments. I don't always get to all of them, but appreciate everything that you do. Uh, Lisa G. Also, who else we got? We got John 002. Cornelius Jones. What's up? What's up, Cornelius? Shout out to 999 Army. Lindsay. That's uh, Lindsay number two or Lindsay number three. 
Shadow Blade, what's up? Root Beer Brad, Ja Wood, Esteban Espen, Moody Girl, thank you. Pleasure as well. Moody Girl, very, very active in chat. Emma Michalik, thank you for being here. Miranda Lemon, thank you. Stax, the beatbox breaker. What's up, Stax? Chris Baker, I just saw you kind of, I saw you jump in there real quick. Parody, what's up, Parody? Thank you for being here. Sharon Jackson, also known as Miss Jackson. I am for real. Michelle M. And Samara. Samara is Michelle M.'s daughter. So, what's up, Samara? Hope you're having a uh, good night. And who else we got here? Come on, guys, quick. I'm going to wrap these shout-outs up in the next 15 seconds. Skyler, what's up, Skyler? Nick Black, always a pleasure. Nuke Soup, brand new sub. So glad you found the channel there, buddy. Thank you so much. Hashtag Bullhead. And who else we got here? All right, everybody. It looks like I am called up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, sorry, Chris Baxter. I said Chris Baker. Hey, my screen is scrolling fast. Baxter. Naruto. Naruto, I have not seen you in, in a minute. Daniel Ivan. You just DM. Oh, I forgot we had like a 20-second lag. That's why a few people, the, uh, the late people are jumping in here really, really quickly. If I missed you guys for a shout-out, my sincere apologies. Check this video when it goes live. Philip Drolet, Casey Alton, thank you for being here. Zachary Rodrick, and the rest of the 999 Army, Diane Estes, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I am out. You guys have a wonderful night, wonderful week. Peace.